Good morning, everyone. My name's Jeff, and it's awesome to have you here with us today at Oak Ridge Student Ministries. Last week, we started this series called Movement. And we said that a movement is a group of people working together toward a common goal. The movement that we're part of here at church, it's one that follows Jesus and wants to show others his love. It's a pretty major movement, isn't it? I think it's one that has the potential to change the world. Maybe you've heard someone say that you can change the world. If you haven't, let me be the first to tell you that I believe it's true. This room full of us, when it was full, or if you're with us in person on Sunday morning, or if you're just joining us on YouTube, you have the potential to change the world. We are a group of world changers. Maybe you hear that and it really excites you. It's exciting for you to think about being a part of a movement that could change something in this world. Or maybe you're a second group of people who would admit that it kind of feels like too big of a responsibility. You know, the world is a huge place and we're just one person. What can we possibly do to make a big change in this world? We don't even know where to start. And if we did, We're honestly a little too scared to start trying. If that's how you feel, then let me just tell you that I can relate. I want you to know that you're not alone in feeling scared. The whole idea of doing something to change the world is scary. It feels like this big, impossible thing that we just wouldn't be capable of doing. And because of that, we think we don't know how to do it. Or... We don't feel like we know enough, or we're not sure where to start, or we think we've made too many mistakes to help anyone else, or we think we're the only ones who care, or we don't know how to keep going once we begin, or we're afraid to start because we're afraid we'll fail. But what if I told you that all this change the world stuff really is possible for you and for me? In fact, it's something that can happen in big and in small ways when we join the movement to follow Jesus. Because changing the world is something that Jesus did thousands of years ago. And it's something he gives his followers a chance to do too. Let's take a minute there and pause and discuss with our small group these next two questions. So, how do I know that we are capable of changing the world? Well, because of something that Jesus said during some of his final moments on earth. Today, we're going to look at the challenge Jesus gave to his disciples, the closest people to him while he was here on earth. These people did everything with Jesus. They witnessed him doing some of the most unbelievable and life-changing things, from healing the sick, to calming the sea, to raising the dead. If anything, you'd think that these people believed that Jesus could do everything anything. Well, remember, like us, they were humans. And part of being human is experiencing the very real fear that you might not be able to do the big, crazy, almost impossible thing. So I have to imagine that when Jesus asked his disciples to literally go out and change the world, they were a little nervous. Could they really do it? Well, first, let's take a look at what Jesus said In Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 to 20, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, I am with you always even to the end of the age. I imagine the disciples might have felt the same way. At this time, they weren't even safe in their own country. Leaders of their nation were out to arrest or even kill them simply because they followed Jesus. So the idea of going into unknown parts of the world and spreading the movement of Jesus, well, I think that would have seemed crazy to them too. And it definitely would have been scary. But still, Jesus called them to do it. He gave them a big vision for the impact 
that they could have in even bigger places. Did he know that sometimes they'd be scared? Absolutely. Did Jesus know that it would be really difficult sometimes? Even more than they would ever know. But Jesus also knew that with him, the disciples could do it. His belief in them helped them believe too, both in themselves and in the movement. Think of it this way. Have you ever seen a relay race where a baton gets passed from athlete to athlete? The baton is used to tell the next person that it's their turn to go. In a way, Jesus was handing his disciples a baton. It was like he was saying, Okay, I've gone this far. Now it's your turn. It's your turn to go and make a big impact in your world. And the same can be true for us. It's your turn. I want you to close your eyes and imagine holding that baton. Now, take that baton and pass it to the next person. Each of us, as we hold this baton, I want you to think about these truths. First, Jesus is passing the baton to each one of us, that imaginary baton that you're holding. Jesus is giving it to you, saying, go. I'm calling you to serve, to speak up, to share the good news, to love other people, to be part of my movement, Jesus' movement, to change the world. And he's also telling us that sometimes that means doing things we're afraid of. In other words, Jesus is saying, do something you're scared of. The amazing changes we want to see in the world around us, we can be part of making them happen. But in order to do that, we have to go. We can't let fear hold us back. Just think about the disciples. They were probably scared, but we know they did it anyways. They took small steps that helped to make big changes in the world. We wouldn't know about the movement of Jesus without them taking those small steps that make big changes in the world around us now. They kept the movement of Jesus growing and going so that we can be part of it today. How were they able to do it? Well, let's look at the last thing that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 28, verse 20. Be sure of this. I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Jesus promised to be with his disciples, always. He didn't say sometimes, or when it was easy, or not just when they needed him, always. And it's the same promise that he gives to you and to me. As followers of Jesus, his very spirit lives inside of us. He goes with us wherever we go. He is closer than close. When we join the movement and step out to do something that scares us, we can do it because we know that we aren't doing it alone. Imagine what could happen if we decided to simply do it. If we decided to take the baton that Jesus had given us and run with it. If we did the thing that we're scared to do. What if we didn't let our fears and our anxieties stop us? The really cool thing is that this movement is already happening. This isn't new. And that means that all we have to do is join in. There's already lots of people you know doing this. And if we join into this movement, if we take small steps forward to make big changes in our communities, the possibilities and the impact to help others is endless. So, Do something you're scared to do. And here's the way that you can start. First, name what you're scared to do. Name that thing that scares you. That thing that has the potential to change the world around you for the better. And I'm not talking about like killing a spider for your brother or sister. I'm not talking about, you know, whatever it is that you're scared to do. I'm talking about that thing in the back of your head. That thing that bugs you. In youth, we've often called it your holy discontent. That thing that just makes you want to do something. Maybe for you, it's loving the person in your family who is hard to love, or donating your allowance to a cause that's important to you, 
or choosing to say something when someone is being hurt or bullied, or learning about an organization or a person who is already working to serve others in a big way, or it's serving in a ministry in our church every single week. Whatever it is, name it. Then next, ask God for the courage to do it. Ask God to help you do something you think you can't do for someone else. To make the impact you're not sure you can make. To actually do the thing you're scared to do. Ask Him to give you the words, thoughts, actions, and courage to make it happen. Ask God to help you take the first step to join the movement. And finally, this seems a little obvious, but make the step. Do that thing that you're scared of. Take a first step. I know this will come as a surprise to a lot of you, but I used to be terrified of speaking in public, of talking in front of people. But I took one small step. I took a step in the direction of Jesus. Sometimes it can feel big and overwhelming. And when you look at that whole movement or that whole big problem, if the thing that bothers you is poverty, it feels huge to try and solve that issue. Because that's not an issue that one person is going to solve. But what if you, in the name of Jesus, step into that issue and make the change that you can make? Make a step. And remember, you're not doing it alone. God promised the disciples that he'd be with them. Always. To the end of the age. He promises you the exact same thing. The very Spirit of God that lives inside of you is the same Spirit of God that lived inside of the disciples that empowered them to make these huge changes. One small step at a time. So what's your step? What is it that God is calling you to do to change the world around you? Let's take a minute and discuss all of that. That seems huge. But to discuss in our small groups. Again, If you're not here with us on Sunday morning, please try and join us. We're doing the masks, the distance, the sanitizing, all that stuff. Um, It is safe. Please come and join us so we can learn from you and you can learn from us so that we can continue to grow together. Let's pause and discuss in our group. All right, guys. I feel like I just dumped a lot on you. But... I think it's really important to take that first step. So let me pray for you as we close. God, thank you for the opportunity to have these big discussions. I pray that you would guide us. You would help us to see the things in our world that we see as problems. Help us to take a step towards a solution. Even if it's just learning more, even if it's just asking some questions, Help us to grow in you so that we can make changes in the world around us in your name. Thank you, God. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, guys. Uh, It's awesome to have you here with us again, and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Ciao.